Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and this is part one of my two-part course of how to print in Lightroom. Theme tune. Do, 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 do. do the shaky, do the shaky, do the shaky, whatever the shaky is. Ooh, it's a bit like the, the jelly that I did once. Shaky. Okay. So the reason I'm going to do this in two parts is because really it is important to understand when printing some of the key elements before you just go, oh, I want to use this photograph, print. So first of all is proofing and the second of all is actually printing. So I need to just talk over a few things about printing and how it works. So it's whatever you see on your image, whatever you see on a screen, could potentially be very different to what you see as a printed image. That's because the technologies are completely different. One uses little RG, red, green, and blue, and little white lights inside the screen that lights up and shows you the image. The other one uses a whole range of pigments or inks, say some of them have like 15 inks in them, that print down little dots on an image. One of them have all the lights off and you can see it because it glows. The other one, without any light reflecting on it, you can't see it. So the technology is different and that's really important to understand before printing. That there is a conversion going to happen to go from digital to print. And that conversion is what is really important. And this is really why. Every paper and every printer has a set of inks that works differently. It's um, a little bit like if you take a crayon and you color on say brown paper and then you color on white regular paper. The color is going to look different because the paper is different and actually the shade of the paper is different there but it's actually to do with the surface of the paper as well. And then the other thing it's like when you say oh hey can you go out and get me some blue crayons? Now by what company and what shade of blue? They're all different. So when you come back, if you try and color in a picture, it's always gonna look slightly different. And we have to understand that before we print, that we have to tell Lightroom what printer we're gonna use, so what inks are gonna be used and how it's gonna print, and also what paper we're going to print on. And the reality is, the difference can be not just a little bit like, oh, it doesn't really matter, it'll only be a little bit different. It can be huge, vast, and it can completely ruin an image. So you also have to remember this. You spent a lot of time working on a photograph as an artist for how you want it to look. What you don't want to do is then print an image and then it look completely different and go, well, that's not how I color graded it, because then it makes it pointless. So always think about this. So. Today, the first thing we're going to look at is soft proofing and how you can do it inside Lightroom. Now, a soft proof essentially comes from when you print. What, what a soft proof would be, oh, that's a bit loud, is you would print something and you'd see a version of it. You may not print it full size, so you can see if all the colors are there and how accurate it is and what the sharpness is like and make sure everything's working fine. And then what you'd go and do is do a full print. Okay, so well, you do like a test print and a print. What soft proofing is, is kind of like, it's making a print but on your screen so you can see how it's kind of gonna look when it comes out. So this here is how I sometimes print my images as a test print, so I'll have lots of prints on one thing and I can test it. But inside Lightroom, I can get away with actually not making this print. And why is that important? Well, look, I print in-house. I have a huge Epson printer and I get to print here, so my prints are pretty cheap. But if I'm sending it away to another company, well, then I need to actually make sure it's accurate for what I'm going to send away because I don't want it to come back and it be completely different. So that's some of the explanation that's gone over. Before I jump in, I want to talk about one final thing, and this is ICC profiles. That's what I'm going to talk about. Essentially, that gives the information of the paper and the printer to Lightroom so we can figure things out for you. Now, wherever you go and get your your image is printed, so it might be an online company. Now they should have ICC profiles available for you to download and install on your computer. So get that done first, or if you have a printer, when you plug it in, usually the driver comes with hundreds of different, uh, well, a lot of different ICC profiles. So now we've got that over the way, let's jump into Lightroom and have a look. 
So today we're going to be using this image. I know actually the next two tutorials, we're going to be using this image here that I shot out in Bahamas. We're using this because it's a very strong red color and some great skin tones so we can see how these things affect. So I've done an edit in Lightroom. Here we are we're in the develop module. Now if I want to soft proof, okay, so that is, I'm going to look at how it's going to look like once I print it, or it's going to attempt to do that. It's down here in the toolbar under soft proofing, and I can just click on that. Now, if you don't see this toolbar, you just have to hit the letter T and it will pop up, or you can hit S, which lo loads up soft proofing. Now, when you go into soft proof, what it's gonna do is it changes it to a white border, and this top section here changes. So if I come out of it and into it, it can you see my histogram completely changes, which is kind of amazing. So let's have a quick look at this. So the first thing that we have to do is you can create a proof copy. Now I would always recommend doing that, which essentially all it does is it creates a virtual copy. So we hit that and it's gonna create down here. You can see now I have two copies. That's all it did, a virtual copy. But what it does, it means that any edits I make on the proof, it won't make on my original edit. So it means that for different print profiles, I can have different edits and I'll explain why now. So inside this, I then have my profile, and this is the ICC profile, and this is really important. Inside here, if I click down, when you first click on it, like so, you're probably gonna have sRGB and Adobe RGB, which is essentially what is used on your screen, okay? Which is standard profiles, which is what we use. But then what I have is some other papers that I use. Now, if you don't see any down here, it's because you haven't loaded them in. But if you've installed a printer, you just hit other, and what you're gonna get is a huge long list of all of the prints and papers and everything which is already inside your computer. So you can select the ones that you usually use. So I'm gonna, and you literally just click on them on the side, like so, and then you hit okay, and then they'll automatically be loaded in the side here. So, what does this all mean? Before I print or think about printing anything, you never prepare an image just, oh, I'm gonna prepare an image just to print. What you always do is go, I'm going to prepare an image to print on such and such a prim printer on such and such a paper. That's what's important. So let's jump in and let's have a look at a few differences here. So I have the um, Epson Pro 9890, it's a huge 40 inch, 42 inch wide printer, it's amazing. And I saw that all of these are already logged into this. So let's have a look at the differences here. Our SRGB, look at the color of her dress, of her, of her um, swimsuit. I'm just gonna keep zoomed in here so we can see here as I click through, because this is what's really important. That's sRGB. Now let's, let's look at this coated version, okay? This is actually CMYK, I believe. Look at how that changes the color of the dress. So this is what it would look like when you print. Okay, now let's have a look at another one. Let's look at a double weight matte paper. Again, it changes this here. And let's what happens if we go on a metallic um, glossy paper, you ready? Completely changes this again. And then let's choose one more, a one that, oh, the watercolor, look, it's gonna change again. And then let's just go into a standard um, semi matte paper, which is what I usually use, and that, changes it again. So you can see it actually changes what you're going to do. Now, I want to point out a few other points here. And that is this. So color has a range and a printer can only print whatever colors it is capable of printing. That's called a gamut, I believe. So what you might have in an image is a color which is outside of the range of the printer. So let's give an example of this. So using the top right color here, you can see that this allows me to see any colors which the printer cannot print. Now I've actually got this edited so that it can print everything. But let's look at the reds here. So we're gonna stick with the, with the swimsuit here. And if I slide this up, anything which turns red, the printer cannot print this color. It just can't print it. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to move that red color. And if I'm on perceptual, it's going to move it. It's going to basically crush down the, the range of colors that it's going to do and put the red into a color that the printer can print. Okay, so what I might do is here, I'm like, oh, well, it can't print that. 
So what I would then do is come down and I'd edit this and I'd just slide this slider until all of that red has gone away. And then I can go, okay, now the image isn't having to be pushed or the color is not gonna be changed at all by the printer because it's all within the range of the color. So then the other, the other option that I have is in this side here and that's what my computer screen actually isn't capable of showing. So what I'm seeing on my screen, and this is when things get a little crazy, is like I can't actually see what it's gonna look like because my screen can't even give me the correct thing. And I'm using an Apple computer, so I gotta pull this back further. So now, essentially, what I see on my screen is exactly what I see when I print. If I move this up here, so I can actually print this, but I can't actually see what it looks like accurately because it's moved the color for me. So if you can calibrate your screen and you do have like a spider calibrator, do calibrate your screen. It is really important to do. So that's essentially how we're gonna set this up. So I can say, okay, well, if I look at my two images here, this is the one that is without the soft proofing and this is the soft proof version, okay? So I can go, hmm. Okay, there's some differences here. The red has changed. So what I'm going to actually do for this paper, I know that I'm gonna to have to boost the saturation of my red and now they're more accurate between the two. So I can go, okay, now this is gonna be more accurate for what I'm gonna print. But if I was to make this in this one, oh, well I can see that actually this image is now darker. So what I would want to do is I might want to boost the shadows that little tiny bit. So now it's more accurate to the image that I originally edited. So that's essentially what pr soft proofing is. Now there's some other things that we can have in here. So we have two different things, perceptual and relative. Perceptual basically takes the color, like the red, which cannot be printed, and it just moves that section of color and it crushes it and it actually moves the entire all of the saturation of everything shrinks it down into a color space that can be printed. So it does all the colors. Relative essentially just will edit the red to the closest red. But if you've got, for example, lots of different colors, we've got red and blue here, I would go for perceptual so that it just edits all of it and it keeps the overall tone of the image correct. Perceptual you will use mainly. Unless you have an image that has all similar tones, like everything might be like in a yellow tone or the red tone, so then it would all be fine. So if this was a sunset background, I could use relative. Now, the final thing that we have at the bottom here is simulate paper and ink. So what this does is Lightroom has a go at going, well, oh, well, compared to like the screen, um, this is, we're going to put this effect on it so that it, this is what it should look like when you print on this paper using this printer. And this is what it should look like. For me, I don't think that Lightroom does a particularly accurate job because what it actually does is it's made these, it's kind of, it's made the blacks kind of be crushed a little bit, um, lifted in fact, so that they're not really as black. And I know that when I do print on a semi-matte paper, okay, the difference it doesn't go this dark at all. It definitely keeps that brightness. So it does have a good go, but what I would always do, just when you first print on a new type of paper with a new printer, is actually make a hard copy print to test, just to see how that works. If you do get accurate results with a simulate paper and ink, then you can definitely use that. So. Once you have done all of this inside soft proofing and you are happy with where you're going to go, this means that you are now, you've prepared it to be printed on the Epson Stylus Pro 9890 on premium semi-matte paper at 260 GSM. That's what I've selected. So I have to use that paper and I have to use that printer. If that's the case, then we can go into the print module and we can actually set it up for print. So that's gonna be part two of how to actually print once you've actually got the image ready to be printed. Now that seemed really complicated, you might need to watch the video twice for it to make sense, but remember, you're always preparing an image to be printed on, the, on a specific paper by a specific printer. Now if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I have loads more videos coming. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Booyah.
Brr, 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 brr.